What's happening, people? It's Rux coming at you with a bit of a real video today. So today's video, I wanted to take you through the life of a product owner working at a big multinational organization. As you can see, I'm clearly still in bed. And that's because I said, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it truthful. I'm gonna keep it honest. So I've actually been working <laughs> I've actually been working for an hour and a half now because I just got back recently from annual leave. There's a lot of catching up to do. And on days like this, I actually start in bed because I come back to my inbox with about 250 emails and literally just go through it one by one. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'll give you a sneak peek. Obviously, a lot of confidential things going on in this work day i'll try to show as much as i can but yeah keeping it real keeping it honest i hope you enjoy the video so as i said i obviously come back to a lot of emails i am going to keep waving it so hopefully you can't read what's actually on the screen i've got it down right now to 91 i started working an hour and a half ago and i'm just going through catching up on what i've missed while i've been on leave i was only off for two days and um yeah seeing all the important topics so that I can make clearer decisions going forward. In a few minutes time, I will be getting out of bed because I have a meeting, my first stand up meeting at 9 a.m. That's in one minute time. And I will, of course, be putting on a t-shirt. <laughs> so over here is my actual workstation. My job is 99.9% .9 working from home. So I literally moved to another country to spend the whole time in my bedroom, which is great. As I said, I had my first stand up at 9 a.m. So I better join because I'm late. Hello, we get Estia. <laughs> oh no, I can't hear you. Unfortunately, the sound from my laptop isn't working, which means I can't actually play you the audio, so it's all in here. C'est la vie. But yeah, got that t-shirt on. <laughs> so here we are on my third daily of the day. Mix of people, looking at tickets on Jira and just talking about what can we do to progress with our sprint. Just to give some info, you might be wondering why we have a free living squad meetings this last one i'm in just now because we have three mobile app teams because of how big we are as an organization we also have this scrum of scrums meeting based on the scrum framework that we're using and um in this we talk about overall our chin priorities for the three um app teams and yeah just making sure the products run smoothly highlighting any risk for the free teams, any blockers, independencies, and big organizational topics for everyone. That's what's currently going on. As I said, I'm really sorry you can't hear any of it because my laptop doesn't want to play sound unless I've got headphones in. It is what it is. Okay, so this next meeting I'm in is a alignment meeting between the front end and the back end. Basically, we don't have cross-functional teams as in what would be the best case scenario is that the back end and the front end will make up one mobile team <laughs> i always get a bit nervous talking because it feels like they can hear me but they can't because i'm on mute but um yeah we always have this alignment meeting just to make sure that the back end is aware of issues we're facing on the front end and we're aware of things come in from the back end so that um, we can plan accordingly and make sure that we are delivering what needs to be delivered. Right now I'm still in that meeting. I usually try to work during it because time is money and there is so much to do all the time. So um, yeah, just going through, looking at mostly clarifying topics with the US while just still asleep so I can then respond to um, a lot of queries they have because they usually come in through the night. And um, yeah, just trying to multitask but keeping an ear out in case um, a topic relevant to the mobile app team or 
just me in general if I hear my name gets called out so that um, I can respond and contribute to both I mean there's loads of studies out there saying that you can't multitask and what we do is context switching which means the quality of our output is decreased but hey you gotta do what you gotta do I'm like there's not enough time in the day to just sit in meetings and then work afterwards if I show you my calendar which I'll probably give you a preview of you will see it is meeting after meeting after meeting often I end up with a last minute message like can you speak while I'm in another meeting but you just have to learn to prioritize what is important and where you should be yes one thing I do, which is hopefully not too confidential, is um, creating tasks on Jira, so creating new issues out of it. Um, my business analyst is unfortunately on leave this week, which she would normally take care of things like this, but you know, it's good to contribute. Whilst also multitasking and keeping up with team messages constantly. Okay, so I've just had my lunch, ready to get back into work. I'm actually feeling a bit tired, I don't know what's wrong with me, I always get tired after lunch because it's the first time I eat in the day, so I often end up just wanting to nap the whole time. I've got a meeting in about two minutes, it's a refinement to refine with the developers, the designers, one of the new features that we're working on for our app. Again, can't really show you much, but just letting you know how my day is shaping up. So right now I'm just in another capability refinement, kind of. Basically, we have a lot of initiatives coming up. For example, releasing to a new country, all the work that has to go in to make sure our product is ready for that right now. What we can see is a big old Excel. <laughs> All the top that's coming on, not very agile, not very 2022. But um, yeah, where we've got all the teams at the top, and we need to basically say what we think we can achieve as the product owners in the next cycle, and um, based on some priorities that are already given and what we find to be the highest priorities too. We basically do an exercise like this every three sprints. Our sprints last two weeks each and then we have this plan and reflect week in between where we sort of try to plan I know but not very agile a bit waterfall we we'll try to plan the next three sprints too so for what feels like the 11th meeting of the day I now have a one-to-one -one with my manager um, to basically go through how I'm doing Okay, so now I finally found myself a spare five minutes. One thing I can actually give you some insight to is to one of the ad hoc tasks I'm doing with my team, and that is to get some feedback on my performance in an anonymous way. So um, I'm not sure how many of you are aware, but one way to do this is through a 360 feedback form, which basically allows employees to provide feedback on the upper employee and is meant to give real insight into what they think of your performance. Of course, every year you have your meetings with your manager where you go through appraisal stuff and all of that fun things. But um, this way is just directly from the team feedback on how I am as a PO. I have basically got a thousand tabs open. I keep putting off this topic, but as I just had my meeting with my manager, she mentioned it again, saying how am I getting along with the progress. So that's why now is the time to actually just grab some questions. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel as they say. So I've basically just gone online. I'm on Survey Monkey right now. Not sponsored, although I bloody wish they would though. The idea is that I will basically just copy all the best questions that I see here and paste them here. The scary thing about anonymous feedback is that it can be brutal. And I'm like, if you've got something to say, say it with your chest. But you know what? you've got to just generally hear truthfully what people have to say so just to mention the actual reason for doing this 
I think I mentioned in a video before that I work in quite an old school, traditional organisation and um, of course, uh, if you know much about product ownership, you're meant to just be the owner of the product, whereas um, at my organisation, we're very much seen as soft leads to the team, which still kind of makes sense because um, a team always needs a leader, whether it's the scrum master or the PO. There's lots of extra bits that come with being a product owner and my organization that's the reason why i'm doing this 360 survey because it's actually part of my appraisal to make sure that my colleagues would recommend me um if they needed help if they needed support and yeah just find me an easy approachable go-to of course knowledgeable and an expertise where needed and of course, now I'm in another meeting, another weekly catch-up, <laughs> many of them, uh, with the other POs, so like the PO of web, the PO of the content and the asset management cell, and the PO... I just got scared they could hear. Oh my god, <laughs> they keep pausing when they talk. And the PO... Hello! We just talk about how preparations are going towards product development and what we need from each other again and yeah just blockers and common problems that we might be having so that they can get escalated to the higher power of god and just for the last meeting of the day we have some new joiners and um yeah we're just greeting them at 4 30 p.m it's a big round for the loads of people and we basically just go in a circle and say who we are what we do on the project and what we like to do in the free time. So here I spend the majority of the time prioritising my team's backlog and ensuring that user stories were detailed enough to be taken into the next day's refinement. I check the most pressing ethics as agreed in the many alignment meetings and update my product's roadmap based on all the information received. All of this is done using a combination of Jira, Confluence and Miro. This focus time is when I can also check the Figma visuals provided by the UX designers to confirm that my vision has been properly understood and that what has been designed will add value to our end users. I usually like to give UX enough discovery time before we pull a story into refinement with the developers so that we can find a balance between a good minimum viable product version for a new feature that our users will love whilst still satisfying the needs of our business. Finally, on this day, I continued with the sourcing of 360 degree feedback questions and started to build a survey on office forms. <sighs> okay, so that's basically been my day. I started at 7.30 and it is now currently, bum bum bum, 5.49 p.m. I really don't know how you're gonna find this video. <laughs> Hopefully it brings value to someone. This is generally a realness into my life as a product owner. If you could hear some of the meetings, I'm sure you'll find this video way more interesting, but you can't. It is a lot of meetings, a lot, a lot, a lot, because your business is so big. So many people have to go into making a decision, which can be quite inefficient at times. But um, as I say, I love working here. Right now I'm learning a lot. I'm appreciating it, I'm thankful for the opportunity and I hope you enjoyed this video. <laughs> I'm just chatting rubbish now so I'll see you in the next one.